let's kick off um, with our, of course, our great mates at Labrokes, our special interest segment. This week, we're doing brilliant backmarkers. So, we're going to give you our five, top five brilliant backmarkers um, that we've seen over the years and even ones that were before our time. And the first one on the list was Rough Habit. Now, do yourself a favor if you haven't seen this, but and I, I'll even put it in the show notes, but the 1992 winner of the Stradbroke, my goodness, that is one of the most unbelievable wins you'd ever hope to see. Um he won 11 Group 1s, Rough Habit, which was unbelievable. And he actually won the Stradbroke and the Dubin Cup twice in successive years. So, in the same prep. He won Group 1s, I think, from 1,400 metres up to 2,400. Such a versatile horse, but my goodness, he had a, an elite turn of foot. And I think he won six Group 1s up in Brisbane. So, tip of the hat to Rough Habit. Number two on the list was Warham. Now... I love a good, um, I love a good rags to riches story, which we've done previously. But this six-year-old had a turn of foot like nothing else, and he he didn't he didn't always get it right, but he definitely did in the 2012 Oakley Plate. He was last at the final furlong in an 1100 meter race at Caulfield, which you'd pretty much write him off each time. But my goodness, it's like he hit that immunity star from Super Super Mario Brothers or something and he just absolutely screamed home to nab the rest of the field uh, right on the post. He was 21 bucks that day and you actually look at the jockey Damien Brown at the time and it's like, it's to me, and I, I'm an idiot, I don't know anything that I'm talking about, but it's almost like he... He he was surprised by how quick the horse was going as well. So, yeah, Warren, unbelievable. Last last race he actually won as well. So, um, number three on the list. I wanted to put an international on the list. So, do you remember Pakistan Star? My goodness, what a... This horse's debut win is just one of the most unbelievable things I've ever seen. So... He won two Group 1s over in Hong Kong, did all his racing in, at Sha Tin, but his debut run was something s- had to be seen to be believed. So, he jumped and he was 20 lengths off the pace and <laughs> and that was only two furlongs into the race and I think it was only a 1,200 metre race. But he just had this unbelievable sustained speed that he just kept getting better and better and better as, uh, the longer the whole, uh, the race went. And he landed up winning the race by two lengths, even though he gave him a 20-length start. And I think he that was really con- something consistent with his racing right through hours that he just basically gave punters a heart attack every time he went out there. Now, you always had your, uh, your heart in your mouth whenever Chautauqua went around. Now, he's number four on the list. He's... He's the obvious one from an Australian's um, standpoint, I think. The, his nickname, obviously, the Grey Flash. Um, he, I looked at his starting price profile, actually, and it was actually amazing how often, even though p- punters, bookies, everyone alike knew what his um, racing style was like, he still started around that two he was always like a $2 favorite or a $3 favorite, whatever it is. The punters loved him. And he won three successive TJ Smith stakes. I think he's the only horse to do it. And he also won the chairman sprint in Hong Kong, which was one of the more unbelievable wins you'd ever hope to see. Um, and his last ever win was that last TJ where he was absolutely unbelievable. So, yeah, tip of the hat to... Chautauqua. But the last horse on the list was the mighty Maccabi Diva. So, I think it's fair to say that she was a fairly good horse. Um, the apple of Australia's eye, I believe, and probably our best ever staying horse that we've ever produced. So, she was a seven-time Group 1 winner, including three Melbourne Cups, only horse to do it, and a Cox Plate as well. But what I think 
was so impressive about her and jockey Glenn Boss is that they were just so in sync and they always, Bossy basically just put her in a position wherever she was comfortable. But more often than not, that was basically last in the field and or in the, you know, second half of the field. But they would just be able to time their runs to absolute perfection. And that last, that last Melbourne Cup, Greg Miles absolutely calls it perfectly. Um, a nation uh, roars for a hero. What a line! But yeah, that's that's our that's our special interest this week. Did we miss any backmarkers? All of this was uh, inspired by Brooklyn Hustle. We're at the track a few weeks ago, and she was absolutely unbelievable. She's one of my favourite horses, um, rightly or wrongly. She's starting to win me back some of the cash I've lost on her, but she is. She has an elite turn of foot, but I don't think she is quite up to this list. But let us know if there were any other uh, backmarkers that you believe we should put on the list. 